katoa. Uh, my project is called Exploring Aotearoa Queer Histories Through X Museum Objects, where X is an unknown number. My research question is how might taonga held uh, by Aotearoa museums be used to construct historical narratives of rainbow communities to recognise... Lost the rest of the question there. Um, to recognise the legacy and stories of queer people for future generations. I've got five contexts, but within this paper I only looked at two of them, Queer and Aotearoa Histories and Taonga. For Queer and Aotearoa Histories, this allowed me an opportunity to explore creating narratives and writing some stories. Taonga, this is where I've been interpreting heritage images through printmaking and uh, got to make myself a bit of a nuisance. In the first week, I used Sinotype to create two series of postcards which utilise process, ephemerality, and viscosity. Uh, the first series explored historical images from these huge plates with mammoth plates, uh, 19th century photography. Uh, and uh, these ones were all taken by Charles Spencer with one photo that I took to try and recreate his experience of photographing these vast landscapes. The second series experimented with pr printing text in cyanotype and telling a narrative using photographs from my wedding last year. Uh, this allowed me to experiment with different paper stocks, application methods and exposure times as well as playing with trying to make an engaging narrative. Second week, I reused a lot of this material uh, and explored breaking down the images into layers and then recombining them into a new structure. The first process was edited, creating a book and adding up layers as I went. And the second was a trifold book using uh, some technology that was new to me to create little peephole, which you'll see in a second, uh, along with silent type printing, historical queer imagery, and constructing a short narrative to, to contextual, contextualize these images by Robert Gant, who was a, a photographer active in the late Victorian and Edwardian periods in the lower North Island. My third set worked with subtraction and removing the image uh, to get the final product, much like a woodworker does with a chisel. I'm used to working through additive processes, so uh, sometimes this was quite the mental exercise to make sure that I was doing what I doing what I needed to do to get what I wanted. And the last of the processes for this week uh, was woven, and this allowed me to think neither additively nor subtractively, and to explore interlacing the different layers. Here I wove postcards together, developed a silent type print on them, and then rewove them into a different pattern and re-exposed them. Um, ultimately, I found this quite a busy uh, image, a busy process, and so I didn't continue with it into the next week. Third week, I used telescopic and augmentation methods to combine the historical images with a queer narrative into this trio of tunnel books. Uh, these images come from more from several of Robert Gant's photographs, along with one of Charles Spencer's landscapes. My goal was to invoke the viewer to consider what situation they're viewing and to question their interpretation. And this allowed me to bring in contextual theory to help people think about just how I experience things versus how someone else might. This particular book imagines a leisure day out on the white terraces with Robert Gant and four of his friends. Their names are not uh, their names are not generally known to most people, but they are not forgotten to history. Charlie Haig, James Kibblewhite, Charlie Blackburn, and Bert Erskine, and uh, just encourages people to think a little bit about who these people might have been. This one takes you into one of Gant's photos called Four Men at Bunny's Bush, Re and here I recreate a picnic in the wee glen widened up a bush there, except that on closer inspection you find that the people are missing. Uh, just like many queer people are from our history books, how do we remember them? Do we allow them the dignity of anonymity, or do we celebrate their existence in our memory? The fourth book plays on this a little further and queries what kind of life they must have led. These social and leisure lives that we see in these photos uh, are forced to exist in private or in isolated places away from prying urban life. During this time, uh, carried at the death penalty. The peepholes invite the viewer to, into the scene and a glimpse into their life and each hole reveals a different scene featuring the real life couple of Robert Gant and Charlie Haig. Last week's project wanted to strip things down and just make a simple project done well and then quite so exhausting 
to make and uh, after taking inspiration from other people's art, I wanted to try and find a way of combining printmaking with uh, textiles. For Mori Kakahu, it's a way to connect through your hand business through a craft handed up for generations and when you wear the cloak you can feel the embrace of those who before you. So Kakahu is not in my cultural wheelhouse but I wanted to take inspiration from that and so I thought about like a granny square blanket which carries a lot of the same connotations but is within my um, abilities and this is how I got to this project which I call The Loving Print which takes inspiration from the late Kevin Nicholson's book The Loving Stitch, a history of knitting in New Zealand. So I created a portraiture gallery and uh, I like that at present many people won't know probably who any of these people are but to me these are who they are. If we know their name that's great but if we don't then we don't. So this is who they are to, to me. Some are friendly faces, some are people I've only heard of, and some people I've never heard of until this project. And then in a moment it's going to cycle through to the portraits in a little bit more detail. Now my bibliography was too long to get on the screen in one go. So I can click on that later. I was intending on going through and foiling some of the cyanotype, but um, then kind of felt that. At the moment they're just cyanotype on their own. Thank you. Oh, look at that, under seven minutes.